Hey there, CPO here. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick look at the GT5 USB dongle from ASRC. You can find this at towerhobbies.com. And basically it's a USB programming interface for the GT5 fly barless controller. It's not actually available for sale yet, but as you can see here, it's due to be in stock later on this month. It's gonna sell for about 30 bucks according to the website. You can find it easiest by searching for the stock number ACEM8062. All right, so here's what the USB dongle comes with. It comes with a, an instruction manual that has basic installation instructions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Then we have the actual dongle itself, which is the USB interface that has a servo connector on the opposite end. You plug that into your controller. It also comes with two of these fairly long extensions for the servo connector. That's important because you're going to want to plug this into your fly barless controller while it's connected and attached to the heli, so you may need to get some distance from your computer. Now this plugs into the term port or channel number 7 on the GT5. Uh, in this case mine's a 5.2 and uh, then you just connect it to the extension uh, however many you need. I only needed one extension because I can set the heli on my desk next to the computer and then you'll want to plug it into your computer. Now I will say I did find better success with getting it to recognize my receiver if I waited to plug in the dongle until after the fly barless controller had already been initialized. If I left the dongle plugged in and then powered up the heli, sometimes it wouldn't recognize my SBUS receiver. So uh, if you run into problems, you might try that first. Just don't plug in the dongle until after it's initialized. So now that we have the hardware side of things figured out, we need to go get the software. So you're going to go to thundertiger.net forward slash downloads.php. And in there are some manuals, uh, some firmware updates, and then if you see down at the bottom, an updater and driver. So I'm working on the Mac, so I'm going to download the Mac version. It's basically a RAR file that you're going to unzip and then uh, open up. It's going to be a DMG file, so an image file. And once you open up that image, you'll see this. Now, the first thing we need to do is install the driver, which is also another DMG file within this. So go ahead and do that first. You're probably going to have to reboot. And then when you're done with that, you can go to the GT5 Tools folder and uh, open up the GT5 Tools application. This application is really the powerhouse of the entire system. The dongle is just the way to connect to your heli, but uh, all the real power is here in the application. So I'm going to show you just a little bit of what it can do. I'm not going to go through every screen and every setting, but just know everything you can do uh, by manually interacting with the GT, you can do through this application. But you also have the ability to save and load uh, configuration setups. And there's also some simplicity involved with this method. So I'm going to use this to continue the setup on my E550 because it's actually really quite nice. All right, before we connect to our GT5, let's look at simulation mode. Simulation mode gives you all of the features available, but without actually being connected to the live system. So you can go in and make changes and save changes and load out changes. Uh, and uh, this would be a great way to just kind of tinker around if you didn't want to make any changes real time to the heli. And you can see all the various features that are available to you. It's all the same functionality. All right, so now let's connect this to our GT5. So we're going to apply power to the GT5, and then we're going to plug in the dongle to the fly barless unit. Just remember, like I said, it's much better if you plug in the dongle after the GT5 is initialized and recognizes your receiver. Trust me on this one, I found that out the hard way. After you uh, connect your dongle and push the connect to GT5 button, you'll see on your display on the GT5, it will show GT5 tools. That tells you you've got a solid connection as well as the program feedback. So from here you can go in and take a look at your actual settings that are on the fly barless controller right now. These are real time changes so anything you change will eventually get applied to the fly barless controller real time. So there are some different drop downs that are available to you that 
obviously aren't available in the controller itself when you do the uh, the touchscreen method. So that could help uh, make things simple for setup. Once you've made your changes, the graceful way to get out is to actually disconnect in the program, and that's going to write all the changes to your controller. If you just power down the controller or unplug it from the USB, uh, my testing has shown those changes may not actually take effect. So you have to go in and disconnect uh, to gracefully shut down. You can also save your GT5 setup. So if you've got a baseline setup like I'm doing here uh, before I want to make some changes, I can go save that to a local file on my computer. Then later on, if I want to revert back to an older version, let's say I screw something up in my current setup, I could go back and then reload that. This is also useful if you're in simulator mode. You can create a setup and then save it to a file and then actually recall that file later on when you're actually connected live to your Flybarless controller. So it really is a nice feature and super easy to use. So I'll just show you some of the other screens uh, just for familiarity. But uh, you know, you've got your tail rotor set up. This sensor screen is pretty cool. It allows you to test the sensors by moving the heli in different directions and the reversing uh, sensors as needed. You can also do a custom bitmap on the display of the GT5 screen. So you can invert colors. Unfortunately, you only have two colors, black or this blue color. There are a couple of pre-built uh, templates and uh, you can also uh, you know, build, build your own. So uh, let's look at what happens. I said update GT5 with this Raptor. I'm going to go out and then disconnect from the GT5. And you'll now see on the, uh, the top banner, I see uh, the Raptor emblem that I just put on there. Pretty cool. So you're not only limited, like I said, to the templates that are there. You can start with a blank one and uh, add your own text or you can draw. Now you're pretty limited just based on the uh, the actual density of the bitmap is pretty low, so uh, you uh, you can't do a whole lot, but you know you can have a little bit of fun with it. All right, so one other feature that I want to show you uh, is how helpful the help is, uh, which is unusual these days, but uh, the help is pretty comprehensive, so you can click on any of these headings, uh, click the help button up at the top and then go click on a heading and it will give you fairly comprehensive information about what that setting changes or uh, some ideas about what uh, what you need to do with that. So really helpful help and that's uh, that's a good thing. So the last thing I have for you in this video is just a little bit of a look at how some of the interactions happen with the program. So you can see here if I move the sticks the servos will actually move with the sticks. Uh, but if I go to swash settings and I select the center button, which is designed to automatically center all the servos for you, regardless of your stick position, it will basically lock things down into the center spot and your controller doesn't even have any impact anymore. So there are a lot of little features like that throughout where you're expected to use the measure button or the center button uh, for various testings. So uh, that's really helpful for the setup. So that's it. That's all I have for you. Uh, I appreciate you watching. You know, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Go check out my website, everythingcpo.com. Please subscribe. I've got lots more videos coming, not only on this build uh, and others. And uh, I just, uh, you know, I thank you for your time, and I'll catch you on the next one.